Greetings, my name is Heather Merck, and I am the content coordinator for the Plant Breeding and Genomics Community of Practice at eExtension.org. The Plant Breeding and Genomics Community of Practice is, initi is an initiative of the Solanaceae Coordinated Agricultural Project, or SOLCAP. Today I will be speaking to you on behalf of SOLCAP, and the topic will be the SOLCAP tomato phenotypic data. Estimating Heritability and Trait Blops. Before moving forward with this webinar, you may wish to download and install and open R software on your computer. R is available at www.r-project.org. We will also be performing some analyses and we recommend that you follow along and perform the analyses yourself. To do so, Please download the script file I'm using as well as the data set and you can obtain both of these at www.extension.org slash pages slash 61006. The name of the script file is tbrt2011.txt and the name of the data file is tbrtquality dot csv. As I mentioned, this webinar is intended to be an experience in which you can follow along and perform the analyses yourself. The objectives of today's webinar are to locate and obtain the SOLCAP phenotypic data, estimate trait heritability on a line mean basis, and estimate plops for a trait on a per line basis. Let's begin by discussing the experimental design. Field evaluations were conducted in 2009 and 2010. There were locations in Davis, California, as well as in Ohio. There were two reps in each year in each location. However, in Ohio 2010, there was only one rep. The uh, Germplasm was planted in a randomized complete block design and there were 143 processing breeding lines and varieties. All of these were donated to the SolCap project by public breeding and genetics programs or were commercially available. Multiple fruit were collected for each plot. So the collected fruit were cut in both cross-section and longitudinal sections and scanned for size, shape, and color analysis using a standard flatbed scanner. The images were analyzed using Tomato Analyzer software. For those of you unfamiliar with the software, we have compiled resources at http colon slash slash www.extension.org slash pages slash 32374. Quality analysis for pH, degrees bricks, and titratable acids was also performed. All of this allowed us to obtain standardized data that can be stored in databases, and this data can also be compared across experiments, locations, and years. I've also provided sample images for three of the plots. And we can see here that there was a range in both size and shape of the processing fruit, as well as in color. In the, in the top corner, you can see a, a yellow tomato that may be of the harvest gold type variety. So all of the phenotypic data collected for the SOLCAP project is publicly available, and it's available from two places. First, it can be downloaded from the SOLCAP website, which is www.solcap.msu.edu. And by clicking on the phenotype data for tomato, 
we can obtain all of the data in what are called co-op guides. And these are in .xls format. All of the images are also available for download. And these are stored in zip folders. I would caution you that these are large folders, however, so they may take some time to download depending on your connection speed. The phenotypic data can also be found in future on the SGN website, which is www.solvegenomics.net, and the data here will be available in a searchable database. So today, we are going to focus on a subset of the data for our sample analyses. So we will just focus on the BRICS data. And I have already prepared a data set for this analysis, which is available at www.extension.org slash pages slash 61006. This is the same data file that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. The R script used for analysis is also available at the same website. So now, let's get started working with R. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with R software, I would direct you to a webinar recording that is an introduction to R. And it includes um, how to obtain R software, how to enter basic commands, and perform some basic analyses. And that webinar is available at www.extension.org slash pages slash 60427. So the first thing you may wish to do when opening up R is set your working directory. And the reason for this is that it simplifies commands for importing and exporting data by eliminating the need to write out a full path statement. Setting the working directory can be done in multiple ways, and in addition, setting the working directory varies whether you're using a PC or a Mac. Let's briefly look at setting the working directory on both platforms. So if you're using a PC, using the R GUI interface, under the File menu, click on Change Directory and then you can click your way through to the directory you would like to use. If you're working on a Mac, to set your working directory, click on the miscellaneous menu, and then click on change working directory, and you can also, from there, click your way through to the directory you would like to use. We can also set the working directory using the command line interface and the command set wd. And from there, we would enter the path statement. I'd like to acknowledge the following groups and individuals for their contributions to this work. First, I'd like to thank collaborators at Ohio State University uh, within the research group of Dr. David Francis. And that would include Dr. Sungchur Sim, Deborah Leabuff, Troy Aldrich, and Nancy Horachi Morehan. I'd like to thank collaborators Dr. Alan Van Dynes and Sean Yarns at UC Davis, Nankui Tong at Campbell Soup, Dr. Jay Scott and Dr. Sam Hutton at the University of Florida, Dr. Joanne Labatt at the USDA ARS in Geneva, Dr. Meg McGrath at Cornell Long Island, Dr. Dilip Penthi at NC State University, Dr. Robin Buell and Dr. Candy Hansey at Michigan State, Dr. Lucas Mueller and Dr. Nama Menda at SGN.